Hi everyone, I am Manish and along with me Shivam, we work with AC Hosting in Nutanix. So our presentation uh, uh, today will be around some exploratory work we did on evaluating Intel's subpage protection feature in context of fly migration. So this is our agenda for today's presentation. I will start with uh, what kind of issues we are trying to tackle in live migration and how something like SPP can help there. What is SPP? Uh, how we integrated SPP in live migration, QMU, KVM flow, and what kind of initial results we got. Then what is currently pending to be done? Possible challenges with using SPP for live migration and what we have in bucket for future work in this area. So everyone must have faced non-converging live migrations and understands how frustrating it is. Sometimes even though live migration completes, it can take hours. In pre-copy live migration, time taken by a live migration mostly depends on two factors. First one is amount of data it need to transfer. And second one is rate at which it can transfer data. Rate at which a live migration can transfer data is limited by available network bandwidth in most cases. And we cannot do anything about that. Now, live migration can take huge amount of time because either guest itself is starting at very high dirty rate or network bandwidth is too low to migrate a workload even with the moderate dirty rate. So low network bandwidth is very common for live migration which goes over a wide area network. We especially want to improve these cases where we have to migrate a VM over wide area network. Now, how we can reduce time to migrate in these cases? We can basically try reducing amount of data which needs to be transferred but how we can uh, reduce it. We can try different comp compression algorithms which are currently present in QMU, but all of those have significant side effects, side effects in, either in terms of CPU utilization or memory overhead. Also, those may not be that effective depending on workload. Now we want to evaluate a new SPP based approach to reduce amount of data and evaluate what kind of pros and cons it has. Like for what kind of workloads it works well or may not work well. What kind of potential side, effect, side, effects, side effects it can have in terms of guest performance as well as host overheads. Also SPP uh, may not be an alternate for existing. Uh, also SPP need not to be an alternate for existing compression algorithms. Compression can work on top of SPP also. There was a similar exploration done by Yosuke Ojawa and Takahiro Singawa but that was not done on actual hardware and was emulated. Uh, we have put a link in reference for more details. If someone wants to read uh, about that paper. So what is SPP? SPP of subpage protection is a new feature by Intel starting with Ice Lake servers. It allows us to enable or disable write protection on a subpage of size 128 bytes. Basically, for every 4K page, we have 32 subpages of 128 bytes. So how it works, uh, SPP provides extra page table support or SPPT along with EPT for uh, storing access flags for any GFL. You need to set SPPT in every VMC similar to EPTP. Now, L1 entry of SPP page tables contains access permission vector of that specific G GFL. L1 entry of SPP table is a 62-bit entry, basically 2-bit for every subpage of size 128 bytes. Out of every 2 bits, one is reserved and other one indicates access right of that subpage. Value 1 means write access is allowed on that subpage, otherwise it is not allowed. Now, he, how we come to know if subpage tracking is enabled or not on any GFN? Basically, L1 entry of every GFN in EPT has uh, SPP bit. If SPP bit is set, that means subpage level tracking is enabled for that GFN and we need to traverse SPPT for uh, getting right access permission for that subpage. Basically, in normal or older workflow, there was just GFN level write protection. You could basically unset write bit in L1 entry of EPT page tables and enable write protection on full page. But with SPP support, you can enable subpage level protection for any GFN by marking SPP uh, bit along with unsetting write bit in EPT. And then you can control subpage level access by setting or unsetting access bits for every subpage in L1 entry of SPPT. SPP protection works only with 4K pages. So if you have large page mapping, first you need to break those pages and then you can enable SPP protection. Also, subpage protection is active for a GFN only when both write protection is enabled as well as SPP bit is set in EPT for that GFN. Otherwise, SPP bit is ignored. So 
So uh, bit 62 in L1 entry of EPT indicates SVP bit. Also, any VMIG due to SVP protection still comes through EPT violation. And you need to figure it out by checking the page tables if this violation was due to normal write protection or sub-page level protection. Based on that, you can act upon. But if SVP page tables are not properly configured, we get a new VM exit, which is SVPT misconfig. Now, how SVP can be useful for live migration? As we cannot, as we can do data tracking at subpage level. Now, as you may, if a, if we have a workload which that is a 4K page only partially, in that case we don't need to transfer full page to destination. We should be fine just transferring only few subpages which were dated. Uh, this can significantly reduce amount of data that needs to be transferred to destination. SVP can basically reduce amount of data to be transferred by fraction of anywhere between 1 to 32, depending on access pattern of that workload. Now, what kind of changes or efforts it required on implementation side? I will start with KVM. On KVM uh, side, we already had some initial base patches, thanks to Yang Yzen which already had most of the SVP support. Uh, things like it already provided IFTL or routines to set or unset SVP access permissions on, a, on any given uh, range of memory, even for uh, large space back memory. Also things like handler for SVP to misconfig and page fault modification to dynamically apply SVP protection to avoid uh, overloading of uh, set and unset uh, IFTLs or APIs. We just have to integrate those patches with uh, live migration related workflow. So on top, top of the base patches by Yang, we have to do a few, few additional things to use SPP with uh, live migration. Some of those are like what uh, we have listed. First thing, uh, rebasing patches. So those patches were meant for kernel 5.1. We rebase those patches to kernel 5.10 and we'll soon be doing it for TDP MMU and upstream master. Also, we found few bugs in base patches while testing with QMON scale, which were probably hidden with self-test. So fix those bugs. Then we integrated enabling disabling, disabling SV protection through set memory region if dirty logging is enabled. Also, we integrated it uh, with uh, get dirty and clear dirty IFL to fully fit SPP in live migration workflow. Uh, then managing different sizes of bitmap based on if SPP is enabled or not. We replaced most of the uh, mark page dirty to sub mark sub page dirty wherever we could safely or conf confidently do it. Other places if SPP is enabled. We call and we if we call mark page 30, we mark, mark all sub page 30 for that page. So that kind of bitmap management we had to do. Then we optimize TLV flushes by batching uh, TLV flushes and also uh, only doing TLV flushes on required ranges instead of doing full TLV flushes. Also try to bring TLV flushes out of critical sections wherever possible. Then other small fixes we made like handling vCPU and memory hot plug after SPP is enabled. So this is what current KVM side flow looks like. First, we have SVP capability. If it is enabled, live migration will be using SVP. While enabling SVP capability, we update SVP T pointer for all existing uh, vCPUs. Also, we initialize metadata for all existing mem slots. That me metadata actually holds access permission vectors for every GFN in that uh, mem slot. Based on uh, that, uh, Based on what we have in mem slot um, SVP metadata, we can later populate EPT as well. Uh, SPP tables. If new vCPUs are added or mem slots are added or deleted, we handle all those uh, initializations dynamically for those eight cases. Now set memory region. So based on if we have KM mem log dirty pages in mem slot flex, we enable or disable SVP write protection on memory slot. If you want to enable SVP dirty tracking, uh, we update all SVP data for that slot to disable write access on all, all the sub pages. Also, we mark SPP bit if for a GFN, 4K or L1 entry is present in EPT. If it is not present, this is done dynamically while handling page fault on that GFN. If memory in uh, that slot is backed by last pages, we invalidate those mappings so that those can be converted into 4K entries on page fault. Also, we invalidate all SPP page tables if already set up so that we can get SPP to misconfig and set up page tables there. We never populate SVP tables in EPT page folds. It is always done by SVP team is config. Similar things we do when dirty log is disabled on mem slot. We update metadata, then we remove SVP bit for, from all 4K entries, and finally, flush invalidate SVP tables. 
again most of this flu other than live migration part was already covered by yang in in his base patches then uh, during clear dirty eye or get dirty eye call we don't need to make any update in epds we just need to update as we meter data in mems log and flush or invalidate svp tables so that those can be rebuilt uh, with latest access right on svp team is config now what happens when there is a direct page fold or one which cannot be handled by fast page fold if there is a 4k le level mapping done in direct page fold we also check svp level access vector for that gfn and based on that we can update svp in page table entry for that gfn in ept then uh, this is what is modified in fast page fold for svp if you are in fast page fold that means ept page table mappings are already done and page fold was due to write protection also if there is page fold with svp bit set that means svp table is already set for that gfn by some sppt misconfig earlier so in that case we just need to flip access bit for that specific sub page in spp tables basically if a sub page is already marked that for a live migration iteration we can disable we can disable write protection on that sub page until uh, next uh, get that your clear that you have called Uh, now we get SVPT misconfig for any GFN if SVP page tables are not mapped until last level for that GFN. If we get SVP misconfig, if we get SVPT misconfig, we initialize all PTs up to uh, leaf level. So this covers most of uh, KVM side workflow. Uh, now Xiaomi will take over to explain QMU side workflow and uh, remaining sections. Hi everybody. Let's discuss the KMU support for SPP now. This is a brief overview of what we have implemented on the KMU side. Uh, to summarize, we have added code changes to add and manage separate bitmap for subpage level tracking, and we have kept the number of copies uh, bitmap copies to just two rather than three, which is the case with page level tracking. And we'll discuss the reasons for this in the later slides. We have also added support for trans uh, transmitting and receiving data at subpage level granularity. Let's discuss some results we have obtained. So these are just the preliminary results, and we are looking forward to share more results with the community in the near future. So for now, we have tested our implementation on these two different workloads: Nutanix VCVM and kernel build process. And this is just to highlight um, how the workload behavior can dictate the effectiveness of um, subpage level protection. So Nutanix PCVM is a VM uh, which runs workloads that manage distributed systems in Nutanix clusters, and is, it is able to drive a good enough dirty rate of around 0.5 gigabytes per second. Uh, the second workload is a kernel build process, uh, which basically can drive a very good dirty rate. So uh, we'll discuss the results on these workloads. But before that, let's plan out the uh, uh, plan out our evaluation. Um, how do we evaluate the gains or losses with SPT? So we will start with uh, observing the memory access pattern of the workload, and we will be considering only writes. So what memory access pattern means is that uh, if the workload is dirtying a page in a given iteration, does it dirty most of its most of its subpages or just a few of its subpages? So that becomes an important question. Another important question is how much we will be able to reduce the total volume of data to be transferred across file migration, and this can be simply answered. Uh, through the memory access pattern information, and one more important question is the uh, is how the network throughput is impacted with um, SPP because there will be an overhead uh, in transferring data at subpage level granularity, granularity, which is a smaller granularity of transferring data. Uh, okay, but once we have these two metrics, reduction in total volume of data to be transferred and the impact on network throughput, will be good to uh, Measure the improvement in time to migrate, and this becomes the basis of our comparison of live migration with SPP and without SPP support. And note here that our implementation to the day on the day this video is getting recorded is still not very stable. So some of the data uh, which we have obtained uh, is from offline calculations. So these two histograms represent the memory access patterns for Nutanix PCVM and kernel build respectively. Um, so basically, these represent how what percentage of the dotted pages uh, for what percentage of the dotted pages only one subpage have been dotted and for what percentage of the dotted pages two subpages have been dotted and so on 
So you can see that for Nutanix PCVM, for more than half of the pieces which have been dotted, only a few sub pieces have been dotted, right? But for the kernel build process, uh, for more most of the uh, pieces that have been dotted, uh, almost all the sub pieces have been dotted. This uh, it, it is pretty clear from these diagrams that uh, sub piece protection can be eff very effective in um, workloads like Nutanix PCVM, where most of the pieces that have been dotted, for most of the pieces that have been dotted, only uh, a few sub pieces get dotted. Okay, so from the memory access pattern, we can deduce the percentage reduction in data percent uh, data to be transferred across file migration, and we can see that for PCVM, uh, the data to be transferred uh, decreases by around 60%, which is great. But for kernel build, it is around 15%, which is decent, but might not be good enough. Okay, so now uh, let's compare the time to migrate uh, with and without SPP for both the workloads. So you can see that for Nutanix PCVM, we see a significant decrease in time to migrate uh, with SPP. And for kernel build, uh, the decrease is not that significant. So you can uh, pretty, it's, it's pretty clear from this that for workloads like Nutanix PCVM uh, will be, uh, this SPP, live migration with SPP will be pretty effective. Also note here that uh, the effective throttle rate uh, uh, decreases with SPP. Um, and this is because uh, the throttling logic uh, is not, uh, is flawed for SPP. So we need to adjust the throttling logic so that uh, we can match the throt effective throttle rate with SPP to the level without SPP. And once we do it, uh, we expect that this time to migrate will further go down uh, with SPP. So the improvement will further increase. Okay, but now let's take some time to discuss the limitations of SPP in live migration context. And we'll start with cases where the network throughput is very high. Um, because in these, in these cases also, there'll be a reduction in total volume of data to be transferred across live migration, just like the case of low network throughput cases. Um, but this gain uh, in terms of data, to, uh, in terms of reduction of data to be transferred will be overpowered by uh, the impact on network throughput due to the overhead involved in transferring data at uh, a smaller granularity. And you can see in this chart that uh, how max network throughput drops significantly with SPP. And uh, this just, uh, this shows that uh, for uh, cases uh, with high network throughput, uh, live, uh, live migration uh, with SPP might not be very effective. Also, live migration with SPP may not be effective for multi-FD as well because multi-FD already features high CPU utilization and this CPU utilization can uh, increase further up to four times with uh, SPP. Um, and lastly, uh, SPP is uh, not possible for zero copy as of now because uh, we have to maintain 4K level phase mappings with zero copy. And so zero copy at uh, zero copying at sub phase level is something which is not possible. Okay, so uh, what are the challenges uh, with SPP? So the major two challenges are the uh, memory overhead and the impact on guest performance. So with SPP, we'll have 32 times larger bitmap. We will have to maintain 32 times larger bitmap and we will have to maintain extra SPP page tables to track at sub phase level. Uh, on the KVM side. And these can be pretty used for large memory VMs. Also, uh, if the bitmap size is large, uh, the time uh, spent in bitmap sync will also increase significantly. So, and due to that, uh, we'll, we'll be holding the MMU lock as well for very longer period, uh, which means uh, in extreme cases, the VM can hang as well uh, due to this large bitmap size. Also, there'll be a huge impact on guest performance because uh, with sub phase level tracking, there'll be uh, an increase in number of, of VM exits by up to 32 times. And uh, also PML is not supported with uh, SPP, uh, which can add salt to the own further. Uh, so to measure the impact on guest performance, we have uh, gathered this data on Redis benchmark. So you can see that the throughput decreases significantly with SPP, also the latency increases significantly uh, with SPP. Uh, so this is a big challenge and uh, we'll be discussing in the later slides how we can tackle this. So how can SPP help? So SPP can help in converging those edge cases where uh, the network bandwidth is very poor, uh, provided the uh, workload behaves in a way that it dirties uh, only a few sub pages when it dirties a page. Um, and in those cases, SPP can be pretty effective. Uh, okay, but the implementation we have right now 
uh, surely have a lot of scope of improvement and that is what uh, we'll discuss in the upcoming slides but before that i want to highlight the current status of our work uh, so we are working on those optimizations and uh, once those optimizations are done um, those basic optimizations are done uh, we look forward to test our implementation rigorously on different benchmark workloads and uh, once that testing is done uh, we'll be sending our kernel and kmu patches for review to the open source community uh, our future work would be mostly around answering this question uh, which is how to counter the large bitmap size and degraded guest performance uh, one of the approaches would be to increase the granular granularity of dirty tracking uh, to a group of consecutive surfaces for example let's say four sub consecutive phases or 512 bytes uh, which means that our uh, bitmap size would decrease by four times and the number of vm exits would also decrease by up to four times um, and that can help us uh, counter both the problem of large bitmap size and the guest performance as well also the uh, another approach would be to uh, selectively uh, track uh, track dirting at subface level um, for example let's say that uh, we start uh, with subface level dirty tracking for each page uh, but once we realize that a few contiguous surfaces have been dirtied for a given page, uh, we can switch to uh, page level, normal page level dirty tracking for that page. And uh, how effective this can be uh, totally depends on the behavior of the workload. Another space optimization approach would be uh, using hash map uh, for um, uh, for tracking the subpages, uh, for tracking dirting of the subpages. Uh, so we'll basically maintain a hash map um, which um, uh, which will be indexed by the uh, subpage number, and uh, uh, that hash map can help us save a lot of space. Uh, another approach uh, or another uh, thing which we are looking forward to is to reduce the number of bitmaps maintained by KMU further to just one, and thus we'll be able to eliminate the bitmap same time uh, overhead on the KMU side. And also there'll be a decrease in memory footprints and maintaining extra bitmap. Okay, uh, another very important uh, thing which we are looking forward to is integrating our implementation with Dirty Ring, which can basically help us reduce the bitmap sync time. And uh, on the uh, and it can help us reduce the memory footprints on the kernel side because we can get rid of the kernel copy of bitmap. Okay. So we are majorly focusing on uh, two ideas. One of them is that we know we know that uh, subpage protection, uh, live migration with subpage protection is not a unique solution. So we want some sort of intelligence in our live migration uh, algorithm uh, so that we can dynamically assess a live migration situation and uh, turn on uh, turn subpage protection on or off. Uh, another thing, another idea we are working on is to dynamically determine the optimal subpage protection granularity. Uh, for example, we uh, say that we can increase the granularity of dirty tracking uh, to four consecutive subpages uh, just to decrease the bitmap size and improve guest performance by reducing the number of bitmap, uh, VM access. But will uh, 512 bytes granularity is uh, optimal or not uh, is something which we want to um, uh, ask every time a mi live migration is going on at what is the optimal uh, granularity for dirty tracking for this given live migration. Okay, uh, so both of these uh, ideas depend on, like both of these ideas work on two key metrics which we have been discussing all along the our presentation. And those key metrics are memory access pattern and the impact on network throughput. Because uh, with increased granularity, um, it is likely that we'll be able to um, reduce the impact on network throughput. Uh, but again, uh, at the same time, uh, the number the volume of data to be transferred will also increase but uh, using this these two key metrics we can uh, come up with a trade-off uh, so that we can optimize for total migration time uh, while not impacting the guest performance significantly and uh, not wasting too much memory or time uh, due to large bitmaps so this is all from our side uh, thank you so much for attending this presentation and i'm looking forward to questions feedbacks and suggestions from you uh, this is our team. Thank you.